Welcome to Ask the Trainer. Today I got a question in from Roberto in California, and he says, my controller has the message two wire overcurrent on the main menu screen. How do I reset the controller? Before I answer that, I wanna stop and just say, what's an overcurrent, what does that mean? An overcurrent is an excessive draw of energy across the two wire path. So it could be the red and the black wire on the two wire path are shorted and touching together. It could be that there are, there's a nick and there's water conducting electricity across the two of them. It could be a bad device out in the field. Any one of those problems is allowing energy to cross the two wire path in a higher amperage draw than it should. That's a problem and the controller has set up this alert. So what happens now that you have a two wire overcurrent message on the controller? Well, it's really significant because you can't irrigate any of your zones until this mesh is cleared. This overcurrent has the possibility of damaging the controller. So the controller is just gonna shut down and stop all irrigation. It's gonna isolate this problem because you're, essentially your field wiring has the potential to damage the controller and we don't want that to happen. That also means that you can't irrigate. This is an urgent issue and you need to resolve it before you can water. It's not as simple as clearing the message. Normally I wait and answer these questions directly on YouTube when I produce my video, but this one is so urgent I didn't wait and I emailed Roberto directly and gave him some instructions on this one so he didn't have to wait. But normally this means you can't irrigate. So let's talk about the troubleshooting tools you need. The first and foremost thing that you need is a milliamp clamp meter. And a milliamp clamp meter can see has the resolution to see down to 0 0.001 amps. That's one milliamp. A standard amp clamp that you might use for testing motors or other things doesn't have the resolution to work. This is an Armada Pro 95, but a BK, BK makes another one. Um, it needs to be able to get down to 0 0.001 amps. You'll find this at your baseline distributor or uh, an electrical supply place. You will not find it at the big box hardware stores. So you're, this is a tool that you really need. The other thing that you need is you, something you already have around is a known good solenoid. Doesn't matter the manufacturer or anything like that. I've just chosen this, this particular one um, because I happen to have it. I'm gonna use this in, in conjunction with this. So um, I'm gonna walk through the step-by-step -step process in a video that I'm gonna link to you, but I'm gonna splice this into the wire pass and this is ultimately gonna allow me to use the transformer and the controller. That's it, these two things. I don't need an additional transformer. I don't need an additional power source. So once I've spliced this in, once you've watched the video and you spliced it in, I'm gonna use this and clamp around one side of the, the wire path and work down the, the line. Here's what's really cool about this. I don't have to break these splices, right? This is non-invasive. I can use this and isolate my problem without breaking any wire. If you don't have this device and you decide you're gonna short yourself and, and not spend a couple hundred dollars and buy this device, you're gonna start breaking splices. You're gonna get the gunk all over your hands. You're gonna to have to re-splice them. You know, this pays for itself in frustration and splices really, really quick, highly recommend. So real briefly, the process is you're gonna get a benchmark reading or a baseline reading from your amperage draw, and then you're gonna find that number and keep chasing it down the line. So the controller's told you it's high. You're gonna look down the line and just keep splice after splice after splice until the number drops off dramatically. Then you back up, you've gone too far. You're gonna chase that high number, and that high number will take you to either a bad splice, a bad section of wire, or a bad device, and you can isolate it from that. Then you're gonna then you're gonna do your one splice break to replace that one item. If you look down in the comments right below, you'll see the link to the video. Watch that before you go out in the field. It'll explain everything step by step. The troubleshooting resources you have at hand are threefold. First one is the YouTube channel. Lots of really good information on there, even works while you're out in the field. You can go in the search function, type in a couple of key search words, and look for a video that's gonna answer, hopefully, exactly what you wanna know. The other thing you can do is you can reach out to Baseline Support. There are two ways to get a hold of Baseline Support. The first way is to email them, support at baselinesystems.com. You'll automatically generate a support ticket. You've got a ticket number that you can reference, but you wanna give them as much information as possible. Tell them about your controller, your site, uh, what firmware you're, where you're running, what's your controller, all that, as much information that's pertinent, and it will s slow down that back and forth. So that's the first method to get hold of them. The other way is to give them a call. Their telephone number is 
294-5847. So remember those three methods. Have a question for me? Click the link in the description and go to hydropoint.com slash askthetrainer to submit your question.